When someone first told me there was a butter made from thin air, I thought they were joking. I've heard of air guitars, air kisses, and even air fryers, but air butter, that's new. Hi, if you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Dr. Hampton, and today we're going to talk about a new product backed by Bill Gates called Carbon Butter. It's a lab-made fat created without cows, without cream, and without a pasture in sight. The pitch is that it's better for the planet and tastes just like the real thing. But as someone who lives and breathes low-carb carnivore principles, I can't help but look at it through the lens of what nourishes us best, real whole foods. And rather something made in a lab can ever truly match nature. Here's what they're doing. A company called Saver takes carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and oxygen and uses a chemical process to create fat molecules that mimic those in real dairy butter. They can adjust the structure so it's solid at room temperature, melts like butter, and apparently even browns in a pan. Early taste testers say it's shockingly similar to butter. And from a climate perspective, it's impressive. Saver claims it uses less than 1,000 the water and almost no land compared to dairy production. It doesn't produce methane like cows do and the carbon footprint is near zero. In a world concerned about climate change, this sounds like the hero we didn't know we needed. But let's pause right there. The goal here isn't to attack innovation. I'm all about new ideas. But the real question is, will this nourish our bodies the way real butter does? Because as a physician and someone in the carnivore and low carb community, I've seen firsthand how powerful, nutrient dense, unprocessed food is for healing, satiety, and metabolic health. Grass-fed butter isn't just a source of fat. It's packed with fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K2. It contains conjugated linoleic acid, a fatty acid with anti-inflammatory and immune-supporting properties. It's a whole food source of butyrate, which supports gut health and reduces inflammation. These are not small bonuses. These are the things that help our bodies function at their best. Now, what about carbon butter? It's pure fat, stripped of those micronutrients. You might be able to add synthetic vitamins, but nutrition doesn't work the same way when you sprinkle isolated compounds into a formula. Whole foods contain synergistic nutrients that interact in ways we don't fully understand. You can't replicate the complexity of nature in a lab, at least not yet. For someone on a low carb or carnivore diet, getting those nutrients from food is part of why we thrive. We're not just eating for macros, we're eating for cell signaling, for hormone balance, for immune health, and for satiety that lasts all day. Another thing to consider is processing. Even if carbon butter turns out to be safe, and that still needs to be proven long term, it's an ultra processed product. We know that ultra processed foods, even ones marketed as healthy, tend to have negative metabolic effects over time. The body doesn't always respond to them the way it does to real whole foods. There's also the trust factor. This is a brand new product going through regulatory approval. We don't yet have years of data on how it affects health markers, digestion, or long-term risk. And let's be honest, the low-carb community is always skeptical of food companies that claim to improve nature. Now, in fairness, there are people who will benefit from something like carbon butter, if you're vegan for ethical reasons, but want the sensory experience of butter, this could be appealing. If you live in a place where fresh dairy is hard to come by, this could be an alternative. From an environmental standpoint, it can reduce pressure on palm oil production, which drives deforestation. I'm not denying those potential upsides, but none of that changes the fact that nutritionally, this product is a shadow of what real butter offers. One of the reasons the carnivore and low carb lifestyles work so well for so many people is because they strip away the processed layers of our modern food environment and return us to eating foods in their natural forms. We're not afraid of fat because we understand how it works in the body when it's coming from a whole food source. We're not chasing low calorie margarine or seed oil spreads. We're eating the stuff our great grandparents used and our bodies thank us for it. Introducing something like carbon butter is, in my mind, reversing that progress. It's re-engineering food into something it never needed to be. And once you start down that road, it's hard to know what else gets added, altered, 
or lost along the way. Let's also remember that not all environmental solutions have come from replacing food with lab products. Regenerative agriculture can produce butter in a way that actually sequesters carbon, supports biodiversity, and improves soil health. When cows graze on well-managed pastures, they become part of the environmental solution, not the problem. If we invested as much into regenerative dairy as we do into lab-made fat, we could feed people nutrient-rich food and heal the planet at the same time. And for my patients and for my audience, this conversation always comes back to health. You can have something that's environmentally clever, but mechanically empty. We've seen this with low-fat products in the 80s and 90s. Food stripped of fat but loaded with sugar. People got sicker, not healthier. We have to make sure we're not repeating history with fat. Fat is not the enemy. The wrong fats are. And carbon butter, while not inherently toxic, is a manufactured fat that doesn't give you the health dividends that real butter does. I also think about trust in the kitchen. There's something grounding about knowing your food came from a farm, from an animal you can actually see. When I put grass-fed butter in a skillet, I know exactly what it is. When you open a package of carbon butter, you're trusting a process you can't see and chemistry you can't replicate at home. That's not inherently bad, but it does mean you're putting faith in a supply chain and a set of promises that may change over time. In the end, I think products like this will find their place. They may become part of the market, especially in certain dietary or environmental niches. But for me, and for those of us in the low carbon carnival world, the heart of what we do is real food. The flavor, the nutrition, the metabolic benefits. Those are things you can't get from a factory. So while I respect the innovation, I'll keep my fork in the butter dish that came from a cow on green grass, not a machine. If you take nothing else from today, take this. Our bodies are designed to thrive on food that exists in nature, not ones invented in a lab. Rather it's butter, steak, eggs, or fish. The closer we are to the source, the better our overall health. You can't fake the way those foods interact with our biology. Technology can help us in many ways, but it's no substitute for what nature has been perfecting for thousands of years. And as long as I'm here, I'll keep reminding you, choose food that heals, not just food that feels. I'll see you in the next video.